inside the house. So we got this Mitsubishi low boy. Um, the thermostat is blank. This is a wireless thermostat. It's not receiving power. So I got this going um, and it's um, a three head mini split. The other two are working fine. There was a power outage, so I'm thinking maybe something went bad up here. So I'm gonna verify voltage first. So here we go. So now we're getting six volts. Now there is a pump with a drain switch. So let's see this one. Is this black wire coming from? Okay, so this is our power coming in here. This looks like a communicator. So, looks like this one's going into this S1. And then we'll go to here. Yeah, so we have 208. So, I think the pump has been, the switch on the pump has been tripped. So let's see if we can take the pump out of the circuit. Okay, so we got it all hooked up directly. I've bypassed the pump, so I'm gonna go restore power and see if it comes on. Okay, so I believe this is the drain switch, so high voltage goes in and then comes back and then goes into S1. So I should be getting continuity right now, which I'm not. So yeah. Okay, so we got power. Now I just need to get this thing reconnected. Oh, I hit the connect button. And we shall see what happens with this thing. So what I did to reconnect this is I pulled the battery out to reset it and I hit the connect button there and it reconnected. So let's go ahead and see if this thing works. We're gonna put it on cool mode. And we're gonna set it there, hold. And it's doing something, so yeah. And the lights are on now. So yeah, it looks like uh, we had a faulty pump, so we need to figure out what kind of pump to get. Because, or see if there's water in it. But I think this is, the drain switch is in here, so we gotta maybe blow it out. But now that at least we know what the problem is, so I'm gonna go ahead and check that pump, see if maybe I can clean it out. But uh, I'm probably gonna end up replacing it. But yeah, that's how you, uh, if you're not getting power to the head, but you have other heads and they're getting power, you're getting power to the unit, you probably have a pump which has got a drain switch which is breaking the circuit so it kills power to the head completely. So yeah. And we're back in the house. So we got this mini split here. It's been dripping water underneath. It's pretty dry right now, but the pan's full. I don't think it's draining properly. So we're gonna have to see what's going on here. So uh, we gotta get to the basement, so here we go. Okay, so we are in the basement. This is our drain right here. And there's several heads here. So there's one head there and then this one. And it just goes down in there. So we're gonna go ahead and take that out. We got our vacuum. We're gonna go ahead and vacuum on this end. Uh, we need to remove this tape. Alrighty, so we got our attachment here. We're gonna go ahead and vacuum. Okay, so we got it all vacuumed out. I put it back in now. I did notice it was all the way in, so that means the the end of this was hitting the bottom of that. So that could have been, you know, maybe it got clogged there. So I picked it up, so it's actually, the bottom of it's like right here. So hopefully it won't get clogged again. And then we're gonna pour water in the pan and make sure it drains out. Okay, so all the water has been drained out. So we're gonna pour some more in here and make sure it drains. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pour it on this side, the opposite side of the drain, just to make sure that it makes it all the way. Yep, all the water seems to be draining out now. So there is a lot of stuff in there. I'm wondering if that's why. It's probably because it was sitting at the bottom of that tube. So anyway, we're gonna do this a few more times just to kind of flush everything out, but I think we were good to go, so. Okay, so I noticed that when we were pouring water in there, it was draining kind of slowly. So this part is sealed, and then this part is sealed. And this line keeps running back. 
which is more than likely sealed. Yeah, it is. So, I'm thinking that if we're getting some vapor lock. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tie, I'm gonna put a T here with a vent, just so, um, cause it, it it's gonna have to push all that air all the way down there in order to get the water out. So I'm thinking maybe that's the case. So I'm gonna put in a uh, vent right here, just to promote better drainage. Cause I did notice when I pulled this out, some water started dripping out of here. So, because this act started acting as a vent. So I'm gonna try that. Okay, so we installed a drain vent. And this is to pre um, prevent vapor lock, you know. Um, and actually the moment I cut this open, a bunch of water started coming out. So I'm thinking that's the case is, <laughs> one was this was pushed up against the bottom. There is a little bit of gunk, so it probably built up. And then two, because um, of the small little space, it was creating a vapor lock because this whole section is full of air. So the water would have had to push the air out so I'm thinking that's what the case is. So we've added this one right here. I'm hoping that should fix the issue. So we're gonna try pouring more water into the drain and verify that it drains faster. Okay, so we're back here at the head unit and we're pouring water back inside and we're gonna see if it drains a little bit faster because now we have that drain vent. Oh yeah, it's draining much quicker. Yeah, so I think that was the problem. Was like combination of a clog and vapor lock. Yeah, that thing's draining real quick now. All right, cool. So we're gonna put this thing back together. And we're back in the back parking lot, I guess. Anyway, uh, this this ancient dinosaur right here is uh, causing the sub panel to trip, which kills the lights in the store upstairs. Uh, so there's two units. That one seems to be fine with this one. Um, now I've killed the power to the condenser and I've cycled it on because when I first turned it on from the thermostat It just immediately killed the uh, breaker and killed all the lights in there So I have this off and then I turned it on and the blower is running So I'm thinking this is the cause of the uh, breaker popping So we're gonna open it up and ohm out this compressor and see what's going on. So uh, Yeah, this thing needs to be changed out. But anyway, here we go Okay, so the contact just pulled in uh, I've already verified there's no voltage. So we're going to go ahead and ohm out this compressor and hopefully it's grounded and I'm not replacing the compressor. We're changing this unit. This is just ridiculous, man. I mean, look at this. This is not even the, this compressor's already been changed. You can tell because somebody put a, uh, what do you call it? Suction line dryer and never removed the thing. So whenever you install these, you're supposed to take them back out after about three weeks. So yeah, I've never seen one taken off though. Well, that I know of anyway. Anyway, um, let's own this thing out, uh, and it's probably grounded, so, I mean, it's from 1983, it's as old as I am, so, uh, whoops, I just gave up, gave out my age, but, yeah, so, anyway, um, yeah, this thing needs to be replaced, just like me. Okay, so we're gonna open it out, we got it on our start winding, and we're just gonna go to ground, and I always put it on ohms, because sometimes it won't beep, uh-oh, so we have resistance, that's not good, so, we're gonna need to inspect those wires, make sure they didn't rub and are touching the bottom. But I'm gonna also check the other ones too. Okay, so we got ground uh, to our run winding. We got ohms. And we're going ground to our common. And we have continuity. And we're going ground to start. Uh, hold on, it's a little trickier. And we have continuity. We're just going to inspect the wires real quick, but uh, I would say this compressor is toast. Okay, so yeah, I've inspected the wires. It appears that um, they are in good shape. They're not, they didn't rub into the casing or anything crazy like that. The compressor just died. So anyway, I'm going to recommend, I'm not changing this compressor. I'm, I'm not going to do it. I'm just not doing it. Um, I'm going to recommend a new condenser and a new coil. Done. Uh, new system or forget it but anyway um, that's that's pretty much uh, how you diagnose a dead uh, burnt compressor so this one's straight up grounded so it's probably got acidic refrigerant in there um, and we're back in the garage so we have a no cool call um, saw ice on the pipe filter was dirty that's our coil 
Now we need to defrost it first. It's not terrible. Okay, cool. Got that one sheet off. I'm gonna have to get the heat gun. Alright. Okay, so I got as much as I could out of there. Uh, so I'm running the heater now just to try to get the rest of it out. And then we will see what's going on. Okay, so we pretty much got her all defrosted. Looking full of ice. Uh, so we're gonna put her all back together and hook up some gauges. We already got the filter all nice and clean, so we'll see what's going on. Oh yeah, it froze all the way to the compressor, so we gotta get that out too. Okay, so we got it in an off position. Uh, so we got about 120 on each side. It's R22 refrigerant. We've already purged out all our air. Um, we got everything hooked up. We're gonna power it up. It's not ridiculous, but um, it's about 80 degrees, so I think this should be about 150-ish. Uh, so it might just be a little bit low, maybe a couple pounds. This thing holds about eight pounds and some change. Uh, and it is R22. Our, tar our design target subcooling is gonna be 10, and we do have a TXV, so I'm gonna go ahead and plug this in. And we got all the ice out of it, so let's see what it does. Now, the filter was pretty dirty, um, so I cleaned it. So we'll see what's going on now that we got all the ice out. Uh, sometimes a filter can clog it really bad, and then it just gets worse. So we'll see, but I mean, that suction pressure is dropping pretty quickly. So uh, we're going to wait till it stabilizes, and then we'll be back. All right, looks like we lucked out. It was just a dirty filter and a frozen coil. Uh, so the dirty filter caused it to frost up and then as the unit ran and ran and ran the frost just got thicker and thicker and thicker and thicker So just cleaning the filter or changing the filter in this case. It's a washable So it's one of those train washable ones. So when they get plugged, it really gets plugged even though it doesn't look so bad It's pretty plugged. But anyway, our refrigerant pressures are okay um, We got a 64 on our suction 130 uh, 189 on our high side, it's about 84, 84, 94, 104. So it's a little bit on the low side, but uh, my superheat's a little bit low, so I don't want to add any more refrigerant because if I do, that's going to go too low, and then we might get a slug. We might get some refrigerant coming back or liquid refrigerant coming back. So we're going to leave it as it is. Uh, inside, we're getting about 20 degree delta between supply and return, so everything seems to be good. So looks like it was just a dirty filter. So anyway. Uh, thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe. Comment. Tell me what a horrible technician I am. Hit that bell notification and follow me on Instagram and Facebook. Thanks for watching.